Hello, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to Awakening with the Girls. All right, welcome to another episode of Awakening with the Girls. Shannon Shine here, and I'm super excited for today's discussion. I would love for you to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what makes you you. Oh, I love that. Uh, so my name is Karen, I go by Karen Olivia, and I... I'm based in the San Francisco Bay Area. And what makes me me? Um, I don't know, just like magic. (laughs) I'm just fascinated by the magic of life. So um, I try to bring that into into my everyday through my practice and my work and and all that. So I think magicalness is the the piece. I love it. (laughs) That's awesome. I think magic is what makes us all a little bit unique, you know? Yeah, (laughs) I love that. So with Awakening with the Girls, my my mission here is to help other females or whoever's listening really to realize that they're not alone in their spiritual journey. I know for me, when I started diving into what I like to call the awakening, I felt a little crazy, confused, and lost because there were so many different um, aspects to it and just so much coming at me at once. Uh, I would love to know what was your spiritual experience like? And when do you feel like you kind of hopped into the spiritual world? Mm, Yeah. um, I think it's for me and I feel like this resonates perhaps with others too. It's like getting to a point in my life where it was kind of a rock bottom (laughs) and uh, like the only way up from there was, was up, I guess I, um, it was like my mid to late twenties. I just found myself in like a, a sorry state as far as like being in a, like an abusive relationship and not being happy with my work life and losing a job and a whole lot of stuff shaking up for me. And so um, it wasn't like, okay, now I'm going to go and like dive into spirituality, but it's almost like it find, found me, you know, mm-hmm. um, just through trying to, to work on myself and heal myself and um, do like look after myself essentially, which I hadn't been doing, you know, in my life up to that point. So um, it was through that just, you know, finding being curious, I think was the main thing, like going to like these workshops that I wasn't like fully sure what was going to happen. And then that kind of opened like a door to something else and opened the door over here and over there and gradually, um, you know, learning more about what's out there and about myself and uh yeah and then you notice then I I found myself like oh I'm feeling you know better in a sense or I know more how to um look after myself and then it just kind of expands from there like it's first like a care thing for me I felt like just tending to my own needs and growth and then it was like, oh, wow, there's a whole, <laughs> you know, kind of alternate universe, I guess, that we can, mm-hmm. that I found myself like, whoa, there's a lot more going on in this world than we are led to believe. So kind of taking that step back from the, the, the expected norm of society and focusing on yourself and your own spiritual journey is what helps you kind of develop your own personal healing toolbox. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you have many different offerings in that toolbox. I know that you do some intuitive energy work, a little bit of tarot, um, some nature-based spiritual practices. And one of your favorites, I believe, is astrology. It is indeed, yes. So what got you into that? Let's dive in there. Yeah, for sure. I, um, yeah, it's going back a number of years. It was just another thing that I found myself getting more into because it was the framework for astrology was like the framework for this um, online community of women actually um, that I joined and I and I dove like right into this uh, community it was called moon club at the time it's called radical awakenings now and uh, through that and through working with the the teacher who led that I just dove much more into following like the lunar cycles and seeing how that affected me and then just seeing the correlation between you know earthly goings on and what was happening the stars and finding it fascinating that like there was often a correlation 
Um, so it was no accident. And so I, I uh, yeah, it really helped me as a tool. And then a couple of years ago, I went and I studied at the Portland School of Astrology in a distance learning program to, um, yeah, to just dive further into that because it's a vast area and massive and we'll never know all of it but um i really wanted to dive in i have a lot of scorpio so i just i'm i'm one of these people who tends to go deep into a thing like i can't just do surface on you know something so i have to go jump right in so um i found it really beneficial for myself and i love what i found through uh learning it and like sharing with other people is that i just adore helping people through that kind of uh gaining like some knowledge around around themselves or their path in this life and my belief with the astrology too is that it's this blueprint of your soul it's like what you're coming in to work on in this life so that you can you know evolve in some fashion this time so that when you come back next time or wherever you kind of go after this life that you have that little stepping stone that you've stepped on um and Mm -hmm. grown from yeah, I love that. There, There is so much involved with connecting through astrology, so much so that I've gotten pretty overwhelmed with it. Um, I'm super intrigued by it, and I'm always looking to learn more. Um, you mentioned that you have a lot of Scorpio in your chart. I know I have a Scorpio moon, and my partner is a Scorpio sun. What could you tell us? What's, what's a sun or a moon? What does any of that mean? Oh, yeah. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, I have your chart here in front of me, actually, you gave me earlier. Um, so the sun sign, it's the, the sign that we are all familiar with because we grow up knowing our star sign, which is the sign, the constellation that you're, um, that the sun was in the moment you were born. So um, you can imagine just kind of the archetypes of sun and moon, right? Sun is like in the sky, sky all day long. It's like bright. We see it. Uh, there's no... Um, you know, you can't miss it essentially. And the moon is like, you know, comes out in the darkness or that's when we see it more often than not. And so it's that kind of more mysterious and internal kind of a theme to it. Um, Sun is like, you know, if you want to put it into the kind of binary of like masculine, feminine, sun is like that masculine presence and moon being feminine, um, more internal, intuitive and all of this. So with a sun in Scorpio, it's almost like, um, you know, some folks view the sun as what you, a part of what you're going into this life. Um, you know, where the ascendant might be where you present to the world. Uh, the sun is more like kind of what you're evolving towards um, and growing into. And then the moon is more of the internal world, like what soothes you, what feeds you, um, what, like how you kind of, where you find nourishment. Um, and things like this. So when, you know, when you've got someone with the Scorpio sun, Scorpio is quite a part of your partner's like, you know, growth in this life. And you've got, you're tended to by Scorpionic themes of perhaps like death, uh, or not death, but depth. Death is also a theme of Scorpio, but <laughs> you can imagine that's where like my mind went. But depth is like um, a big key to to Scorpio. It's, you know, I would wonder if you, you know, you guys need to go like have like deep conversations to feel like you particularly Mm -hmm. need like a deep conversation to feel like connected to your partner, perhaps. We do definitely have many, many deep conversations. And I've always found it interesting that his son is the same as my moon sign. And um, I find that um, my Scorpio energy does tend to come out more during a full moon. And um, having those deeper conversations and, and kind of diving into that. So that's, that's good to, to kind of reflect on as well. Yeah. So what are some other aspects of maybe astrology you feel maybe guided to, to speak on? And if you need to use a chart as an example, feel free to use mine. Um, sure. Love some, some more astrology understanding. Yes. Um, I love jumping into the, the nodes of the moon. So these are, their points in relation to the moon and what they symbolize in the chart is your, um, you know, and going into like kind of past lives terminology and future lives kind of terminology. So it's like 
the south node is perhaps where you've come from or what you were good at in your past lives and that you're bringing into this life as a um, like a talent or something that comes naturally to you and the north node is is the inverse of that is like what you want to move towards that's not necessarily comfortable but it is something that will aid you in your involvement in this life um it's like the thing that you yeah it's outside of your comfort zone but your growth is is dependent on like leaning into those energies all right do you mind if i use your chart as an example yeah go ahead um so you have your north node in um capricorn and your south node is in cancer and they are sitting in um the south node is in the fifth house for you and north node is in the 11th house um and what i'll say about uh the nodes too is that where they happen or where they're transiting through is what denotes uh the signs that we are having eclipses in so we have had the last 18 or so months we've been having eclipses in Cap cancer and capricorn um which means like that energy is heightened around your like evolutionary journey like your south node to your north node um fifth house being fifth house is your south node in cancer and it's being around this like self-expression creativity like creating something out of nothing kind of energy um it's also around children too which is you know creating um and capricorn is more around or sorry 11th house your 11th house capricorn is is concerned with the community with people around you with friendships with humanitarian work charity work doing something for um for the folks around you so um i would be curious to hear if you know you've had any kind of shake-ups in life in the last like 18 or 24 months around those themes mm. you said that um was it the cancer or the capricorn energy that's kind of resonated around like family life and children did you say that uh, one of them? yes yeah it's so yeah because cancer the sign is like um is around children and home and family and it's in your fifth house which is also it's a creativity and children themed house yeah interesting so you said about 24 months or so ago um i i actually had a big shift in my life and it, it's wild how astrology can reflect that because it was about probably 24 months or so ago that i had basically a, a miscarriage that led to me kind of going through this this experience of connecting with my community in a different way and showing up in the world in a different way and it pushed me to wanting to get more organized with my my community the 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 um, the Bring Me to Life community, as well as creating this podcast and creating better routines for myself and showing up for my community in that way. So when I had that shift from kind of like, um, it was probably around one of the eclipses, actually, that I started feeling kind of um, a difference into my body. And I went through that and I kept calling it like this dark eclipse of my soul. And I didn't even realize that that's what was happening um so it, it's really powerful to have that confirmation and see that because in the last i don't know like six to 12 months since i was healing from that um journey i've really put focus into how to show up in my community and be present in a different way so that's that's a powerful confirmation thanks for sharing yeah and thank you for sharing that's that that goes back to like what i was saying before it's it's such a it's a nice affirmation that like you know we're kind of not alone i guess when you when you hear these things that it's kind of there's some element that is um reflected in the skies yeah it's it's written in our like programming there's something yeah. about the moment we decide to become present in this awareness earth side outside of the being that is that brought us here you know like our mothers mm -hmm. but it, there's something powerful about that divine moment that you just you spark into this reality mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. astrology is very powerful and giving us that that confirmation so is there anything yeah. else in that area you feel guided to share right now um astrology wise astrology wise da, 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 da. is there anything happening in the skies that the collective should be aware of in this oh. time with this year particularly there was a whole lot going on in capricorn so like i said the um the nodes the the north node the north node pardon me south node okay 
you can edit that. <laughs> the sound that was okay. transiting through um, Capricorn this year, along with um, like right there around January through or like December through like March ish, there was like um, we've got Pluto, Jupiter, and Saturn um, all up in Capricorn, along with the nodes. And then you've also got the Sun in Capricorn around January time, right? So there was this big Capricorn energy, and these are strong planets like pluto is this planet it's slow moving but it's um so it's been in capricorn for a little while but um it's about death and rebirth and like tearing shit down and starting again um jupiter is moving through there and jupiter is you know if it touches something it makes it bigger so it's you can imagine it's just this kind of amplifier um of this energy that was happening in january and saturn is there too or was there um earlier in this year so um and saturn is this like taskmaster like wants everything like kind of by the book it's a, kind of a you know a stern like kind of school principal i feel like and saturn is that kind of energy so mm. when you get all of these sorry go ahead no you said saturn and it made me think of another question um i'd like to touch on about the um the saturn return is that something that you're familiar with yeah for sure what, so, what can you tell me about a Saturn return? Yes. Um, Saturn is, Saturn has this 27 or so year um, cycle. And the Saturn return is when Saturn returns to the place where it was when you were born. Um, so it will hit, I'm just looking at it here, because you have a Saturn at two degrees Aquarius. And right now it's at zero degrees Aquarius. Um, June That's 16th. why I felt yeah. guided to ask with somebody who was telling yes. me signs like, I'm in the middle of it. And I didn't know you could be in the middle of a Saturn return. So I didn't know what that all meant. <laughs> yeah. Like you are, um, you probably felt that like when it, when it moved into Aquarius, I think it was March 21st um, and it begins, it's going to, you know, it's going to be moving through for two or so years. I'm not sure about the exact cycle, but um yeah, it's like this period of two or so, two or three years where it's, it's like a growing up, you know, and it's because Saturn's like, all right, duty, responsibility, doing things by the book. Um, and here's, you know, we're checking to see where you're at because I haven't been here since you were born, you know, and it, it's coming back around to see like, okay, what needs to like be left behind in your kind of, you know, it's almost like we've been growing up until growing up as a human up until this point okay and now what is changing here so that you can move on and have these next 30 years as um you know a more mature evolved person um and the key i think in this period is like this self-awareness like and you asked about it you know it's kind of coming right so like i think the more like awareness we have around it or just around ourselves it might we might not even have a knowledge of the astrology but it's just a time in everyone's life that everything kind of kicks up like this so um self-awareness like self-work like going inside and and um doing our own inner work i think is the key thing and then we know what to kind of shed and what to take with us from this point forward yeah when someone told me that i was kind of in it and that um there's like this weird break point in mine where it kind of shifted and i was i was diving deeper into astrology because of it because i did want that warning okay what's coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, it's so powerful. Uh, a few years ago, I had a family member get me kind of like a, a year in astrology for me in that moment. And I didn't really realize how powerful it was. It had given me like specific dates in the year that I should have looked out for. And I, I didn't pay much attention to it. And I went back and like recently looked at it for that year. It was like 2014 or something and it even had the date that um my grandmother that I was really close to that that passed away and it, that date in that book was like there's a monumental life-changing passing happening and it's like it's it's kind of cryptic in its explanations but like sure. it was powerful to me <gasps> that's so, amazing I just know Gosh. that astrology and those warnings uh, ever since then I was like wow I should have paid more attention to those warnings so now I'm very much like okay I know my chart I want to know what's happening right but some people are like, I don't want those warnings. I want everything to be a surprise. So there's different <laughs> kinds of people. Sure. Um, I know that you have, um, you do like natal charts and mappings of the sky in that moment. And that's, that's an offering that you provide through your website, correct? 
Yes, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So how does how does a session with you work if somebody was interested in having you kind of dive into their chart? Mm, yeah. So they would I, I give them like a form to fill out and they would be able to give me information on what they are coming to me for. Like I, you know, are you looking for like work and career like guidance or is it more around love and relationships and sex and all of this or um, something entirely different and so I give people the opportunity to share that but um, I'm kind of a firm believer in that you know the folks who will come my way are coming for like something that I have to offer right you know that kind of relationship so Mm -hmm. um, I do like my main thing is is natal chart readings like showing you a whole overview of your chart and what is there and and then focusing in on like things that you're interested in um in hearing about and it's like it's a self kind of a exploration right it's um i find with my clients it's like oh <laughs> a nice understanding of like this is this is part of me and it's just, it's nice to see it reflected and affirmed elsewhere. And like, Oh, I know that I have like this particular wound and like the knowledge is what you can take out and be like, all right, I know what I need to like work in and bring into my practice or what have you. Um, And then if you want to dive deeper, then I do what um, I did there for yours, which is pull up the transits and see like, you know, what kind of things are coming up over the coming like months or a year so that you can kind of be prepared for them. And it's like, it's like you said, it's, it's more often than not cryptic. It's more often than not, like there's going to be energy around this theme or that theme um, and just be aware of it and maybe like have a ritual around it. When did right. I know? And it might not necessarily be just like, I know that a lot of people get thrown off and they're like, oh, I don't know how I believe in astrology because they started out with like a horoscope or something when they were younger and it was very generic. And I found that it's it's much different than that specifically. And that though it may be cryptic, it may be because, you know, our, our lives change a little bit and we have different, um, this is my perspective on it, we have different like timelines we can tap into. So depending on what decisions I would have made, you know, who knows if that same passing would have been what happened. So if it would have said specifically like your grandmother may pass or something, it could have been instead of that kind of loss, maybe I would have lost, I don't know, my car or something. There's all yeah. these different opportunities that happen depending on your personal free will of choice. But there yeah. is like a map in the sky that's up there kind of guiding it a little bit there. I think that's yeah. where like destiny and free will come into play. For sure. Yeah. I, um, it's definitely there's there's free will like it's not it's not all con- like fully faded either and I'll say about like um magazine horoscopes and stuff like if if folks read for their rising sign they tend to be a bit more accurate because that's how they're written mm. but people haven't known like um you know I didn't you know growing up I wasn't familiar with my rising sign but my rising sign happens to be the same as my <laughs> sun sign so <laughs> it, they they kind of spoke to me but you have like a, a Pisces rising, so that That's would be much different than Leo. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Much different feeling than Leo. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, is my Pisces coming out? Is my Leo coming out? Mm. Oh, sorry, my pub. pub That's okay. Is she good? Is she good? Are they good? She's good. Yeah, yeah. she's good. I think. Just neighbors walking. Beautiful. Wait, sorry. That's okay. So. I I see that you also do moon rituals and I'm curious, how do you honor and celebrate the moon with your personal ritual? Mm, Yeah, that changes. I think I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Like my own personal kind of practice and and what I, what I share with others or kind of both. A little bit of both. I I know that how I celebrate it on my own is often different than when I host like a, um, sometimes I'll I'll go online and I'll do like a virtual cacao ceremony and tell everybody to make their own cacao or tea and then we'll discuss the moon's energy. But sometimes for me personally, I like to journal or I like to light a candle and just kind of sit in peace for a moment. I'm just curious what your your different practices are. Mm, For sure. Uh, My personal, yeah, my personal practice, I think just changes depending on how I'm kind of feeling um with the energy of it um and I feel some of them more strongly than others like I did feel that Scorpio one we had recently fairly strong and just 
Um, you know, it might be like a, like a meditation or journaling or, um, and then just kind of ritual around, you know, with, with candles or cards, what have you. And if I host, uh, my circles tend to focus around this idea of, um, storytelling and the medicine in sharing your story, um, and story meaning, uh, in this context, like just where you're at and what you're kind of calling in and because part of my healing journey certainly is uh has been all around like using my voice and feeling like I deserve to be heard and so when I host the circle I I um my my wish and my hope is that is to create my intention is to create a space for people to just be real for a moment like you have your space to just say what's on your heart um and then let your kind of intention come through that like it's story sharing and intention and let your intention flow up and bubble up from what's going on and um once again i think the magic is in the speaking of it like speaking out your story so that you can kind of heal something from this and then speaking out the intention is is the magic mm. I love that. Yeah, I, I believe that my practice very much shifts with the the different energy with the moon too, because the moon is always in a different sign um, when when it's full and, or when it's new and we're celebrating it. And I know that personal practices will will typically change with that as well. Mm-hmm. So I know that you were doing um, in person circles. I'm sure that that's kind of been shifted with the the current times of the the globe right now. But when you start to get those going again, um, if you're still planning on doing them in the future I would love for you to let me know and I'll share them with the community and the group that way if there's anyone in your area from the tribe maybe they can reach out and connect Mm. with you in that way definitely thank you so um you also are into tarot and work with uh, that kind of energy and connection what was that kind of realm like for you how did you get into it and how do you kind of connect with the cards because I know everybody's experience is a little different Mm -hmm. um that's funny you know and as we were talking about Saturn return I was I was considering like mine (laughs) and I I had gone back like I was familiar with the concept but I wasn't so familiar to like dive into the details of it at the time but I when I you know recently when I look back at when it was exact it was like the first time I went to see a psychic (laughs) Mm -hmm. like for a reading and all of this um was like the exact time when Saturn returned for me and it was in my house of work so it it was like all right I guess it's kind of pointing to me doing some of this work or leaning on these skills um but yeah I'd I'd gone you know in the intervening years I'd gone to a number of like um you know gone for readings and the like and I you know it just it it resonates and it's stuck and um for me I studied with a teacher called Lindsay Mack um and she, her teachings are all around this idea of soul tarot and them being like this, uh, you know, a guide for your soul, essentially. Um, and for me, when I, when I read them, it's, um, it's, it's, it's intuitive. It's less about like kind of knowing the, you know, exact meanings, even though like, you know, these are good to know and have, it's, um, there's more of an energetic kind of a relationship where I'm doing, you can't see my hand when I'm doing this like circle, <laughs> you know, this, um, um, I get that exchange, right. you know? Yeah. Exchange is the word. So, um, yeah, they're, they're always fascinating how they, they kind of speak in the way they need to in the moment. So. Beautiful. Yeah, I like to use different, um, I have different decks for different energies. I kind of just ask my intuition which one I need to be using Mm -hmm. for that moment. And I'm an image person, like a visionary person. I like to see the different images and the artwork on them. Certain colors will pop out to me. Um, I do feel like I get like an inner dialogue with spirit as well. I'm just always curious how others do it. Do you have any specific decks or do you use the the traditional rate or weight or... um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, um, I don't lean too much on the, the Smith Rider weight, but I do have this one called She-Wolf um, that is, um, I 
just want to, I don't want to get the name wrong. Um, uh, Serpent Fire. Devony Wolf is the, the person who makes it. Um, but it's, it's just gorgeous artwork and really spoke to me actually when I came across it at an event once. So um, mm. yeah, really gorgeous cards. Beautiful. And I love that you mentioned that you, you just kind of came across it and it felt right for you. I've heard some people yeah. say they've been afraid to kind of get their own first deck because they heard that they needed to be gifted it, this, that, or the other. And I, I personally bought myself many decks. I did have somebody actually give me my first one, but it wasn't because of that. I just hadn't known. Um, yeah. So the, the deck I use typically is my, my, it's a psychic tarot, but it is more of an Oracle deck by John Holland. And it's been my, my favorite. And then another one that's got really beautiful artwork. If you haven't checked it out, uh, I highly suggest the sacred rebels Oracle by um, Elena Fairchild. It's got some amazing artwork to it too. I've heard that one. Yeah. Nice. It's pretty beautiful. All right. So uh, another question I like to ask during the Awakening with Girls podcast is, is there any sort of um, resources, books or movies or anything that sticks out to you that's really kind of helped you through your awakening journey or that you want to shout out to someone just kind of getting into all of these kind of things? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm like peeking over at my bookshelf right now. I'm like, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I think something that really uh, I think in the very, very beginning stages uh, was Rebecca Campbell's Rise, Sister, Rise book. Um, and it's, so she's a teacher, she's based out of, um, I think she's living in Glastonbury now, and she's, um, it's kind of telling her story on her path and like giving practices and little, fra- little um, you know, passages and poetry and stuff that when I read it, I was like, oh, this is like interesting. And like, how do you get to this point? Like, how do I do this? But it was like my nice little introduction to, you know, um, mm. like communicating with spirit and all of this. And um, that's a good like kind of intro, I feel. Um, I'll give a shout out to the community that I'm part of. And I'm now apprenticing under my teacher, Alexandra Roxo. Um, she's on Instagram as Alexandra Roxo. And um, the community is called Radical Awakenings, and that's women all around the world. And we do um, we do online moon rituals and breath work, and that's been a big, big, big part of my own healing journey. And very honored to like continue to help that group as an apprentice. Um, and those are the main ones, I think. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. If you think of more, you can share them with us in the Bring Me to Life community, which is like a Facebook group we have for for people to share like inspirational content, also like offerings. So if you're ever doing an offering or online thing and you want to share it with the spiritual community, you can hop in there as well. Um, So I guess we're at kind of like the the point where I, I like to ask, is there anything else you feel kind of channeling through you or any advice you may give to your younger self or a, a younger spiritual being going into this journey? Yeah. Um, I will give the advice that I am always trying to adhere to, which is listen. <laughs> and it, um, actually Lindsay Mack, the tarot teacher too, speaks to this a lot that like we have to slow down and uh we j- we have to slow down to be able to hear mm-hmm. uh and this has been a big part of my learning curve with this is that i know that when i'm like away in and i'm in nature or this quarantine time you know messages and and downloads and all of this has been through the roof creativity through the roof because i have had that space um i've been lucky enough to be able to take that space and not have you know kind of overhead of worries um, that I know a lot of folks have at this time, which is um, fair, and I honor that completely. But I, I think the advice that I always come back to for myself is like, make space, slow down, don't overschedule, make time to listen, um, because you'll be surprised what comes up when you listen, you know, and you just give, you know, it's it's for me, it's like it's kind of saying a prayer and then just being open 
Yes, that's you know? that's what I, oh man, I was going to say that too. I, I love that. You have to slow down and listen. If you just pray, 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 ask spirit for all these things and you don't hold space for the response, you're not going to learn anything. You're just asking and expecting with no no return and no space to to allow that guidance to come through. So I, I really love that you brought that up. Oh, yeah, exactly. You, you, it's almost, it's like a, uh, um, it's an exchange kind of, you know, you got to give them the space, you know, you got to give them something <laughs> mm. to, to let it come in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when we're talking to each other, it's important to, to be able to hold space. So if you're talking to spirit, you have an expectation from spirit, you want it to do something for you, give it, give it time, give it love, give it attention. Uh, I really love that. I loved our discussion today too. Um, so I know that people can find you at your website, which is KarenOlivia.co, not .com, but .co. Is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's uh, correct. Right. Where else can they find you on the internet, if anywhere? Ooh, yeah. Um, I am on Instagram, and that is Karen underscore underscore Olivia. And that's my main, yeah, that and my website are my main places right now. So that's where you'll find me. Beautiful. Do you have anything yeah. coming up at all that you want to shout out or anything else that you feel like sharing? Yeah. So I am in the, I haven't got a date set for it yet, but I'm going to do another round of my dream work program where you get in a group and we do practices and connection around dreams. And, um, I, I ran it, a, you know, last month and, it was really successful and folks really enjoyed it. So I'm going to run that again. So if people are interested in diving into their dream world and doing that in community and seeing how we can like weave messages together from each other and each other's dreams, um, that'll be available on my website and my Instagram at some point in the coming weeks. So Ooh, maybe we'll have to get together sometime and just do a whole discussion on dreams. I'll get <laughs> questions together for that because I have people ask me all the time about dreams and it's another one of those topics like astrology where I'm like, well, it could go in so many directions and it's so different for everybody. So for the fact sure. that you have a course on it is so amazing. I'll make sure to let my, my community know about that because it Thank is you. a beautiful realm to dive into and you can learn so much from your dreams. You totally can. It's really magic. Oh. Yay. Well, beautiful. I really enjoyed having you here with me today. I think that you, you shared a lot of really new information. I know I learned a lot. I'm excited Ooh. to get dive into my chart a little bit more now. And I hope that people check you out at KarenOlivia.co and Karen underscore underscore Olivia on Instagram. That's yes. it, right? Yes. You did. Yes. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. And uh, I just want to personally give you a little push and say, I hope you're still doing music. I know we did have one of your songs kind of hidden in the <laughs> Awakening Earth songwriters mix, and that's how we cross paths. So I hope that that is going well for you and that our listeners can stay tuned for some of that kind of popping up in some time in the future. I know music takes quite a time to be birthed. Uh, I'm learning from personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it. <laughs> yeah, that's still... Um, you know, it's happening. It's happening here. I'm working off my courage and my skills. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we will all get there. I'm, I'm excited to hear your offerings, but until Thank then, I, I hope that you and everyone listening stay awake and, and shine on always and have a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sharon. Yay. And I just hope that wherever you're listening, you go ahead and give us a share, a subscribe, a like, a comment, whatever it is you feel like it, you are inspired to do. And reminder that you can always check out more uplifting content at bringmetolife.com with the number two. And I hope to see you guys commenting and sharing in the Bring Me to Life community group on Facebook where we can have real-time discussions and share inspirational content because that's what we like to do. Till next time. Bye. Thanks for shining on with us.